Hello my YouTube family, how are you doing today? I just wanted to say that today we're going to talk about animal sacrificing in the Old Testament. Uh, but first, I'm going to pray. Our Father in heaven, may your holy name be honored, may your kingdom come. Lord, thank you for this day, thank you for everything. I pray and ask everyone has an open mind. And I pray and ask for wisdom and understanding so that way I could clearly explain what the purpose of the animal sacrifices in the Old Testament were. Thank you God for everything you've given us. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen, amen, amen. So what's with all the animal sacrificing in the Old Testament, right? Okay, so when you read Genesis chapter 3, verse 6, you read about Adam and Eve sinning, right? And we already talked about what a sin was in my other video. But basically, what you have to know is that there was a ripple effect, okay? So the reason why animal sacrificing is a thing is because it is part of the consequence. Let's read from chapter... from. Okay, so let's read Romans 6.23. And it says, For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. So basically, the first part says, For the wages of sin is death. Meaning that something has to die in order for sins to be forgiven. But the question is, what? And the answer is animals. So we're going to dive into the word. We're going to read Leviticus chapter 4, verse 35. And it says, then he must remove all the sheep's fat, just as he does with the fat of a sheep presented as a peace offering. He will burn the fat on the altar on top of the special gifts presented to the Lord. Through this process, the priest will purify the people from their sin, making them right with the Lord, and they will be forgiven. Hmm, interesting. So animals were uh, sacrificed to get rid of sin, but it was temporary. Okay, so imagine like you steal, right? Uh, if we still lived in the Old Testament, then you would have to get a sheep or a goat or some animal and then basically kill it, spill the blood, and then burn it. And then basically uh, you would be forgiven if you did it right uh, for the sin of stealing. Okay, so I wanted to read to you how uh, the process works. So basically, ancient Israelites slaughtered and dismembered animals and priests spread blood on the altar and put animal parts on the wood of the fire on the altar, turning them to smoke so they could rise to Yahweh. Sacrifice involves killing an animal and shedding blood as atonement for sin. Now, like I said before, people sin all the time and, well, could you imagine killing dozens of animals just so that way you can so that way you can make up for your sin and so because uh killing an animal was temporary that's why they did it over and over and over again there wasn't a one animal one time kill and then you're forgiven for life so i wanted to dive into the word again and i wanted to read hebrews chapter 9 verse 22 because it serves a point and it says in fact according to the law of moses nearly everything was purified with blood for without the shedding of blood there is no forgiveness so basically you kill an animal and the blood is what purified you uh, from your sin but again it was temporary when adam and eve were around and they sin, God killed an animal so that way they can have clothes. After the flood, when Noah was killing animals, it was to offer them as sacrifices uh, to God. And I know it sounds weird, it really does, especially if this is the first time you hear it, but it was a theme in the Old Testament and it was pointing to something in the New Testament that I'm trying to explain. So I'm sure you're thinking, why animals? They didn't do anything wrong. Why, are, why do they have to suffer? Especially like an animal activist, you're gonna be like, oh, that's animal cruelty. But uh, basically, one thing I wanted to say is that uh, because they didn't do anything wrong, that's the point. You know, in a way, they're sinless. When you read the Bible, Adam and Eve sinned and they were people. Uh, animals didn't sin. Now, one of the things is in Genesis, you read about the talking snake that coerced uh, Eve to sin. But we all know that it's Satan. It's not like just a random snake came up and was like, yo, try this out. So as we continue, I wanted to say that the animal serves as a substitute in place of the sinner the the animal dies so that way the sinner doesn't have to that's why god asked for the animal sacrifices otherwise if there was if you sinned in the old testament and there was no sacrificing and jesus was wasn't around then well you would you would essentially die so as we are reading leviticus i already read leviticus chapter 16 which talks about the day of atonement now i'm gonna put that in the description below so that way you can go back and at least listen to it 
So in my video, uh, Leviticus chapter 13, 14, or 14, 15, and 16, as uh, 14 minutes and 38, 39 seconds in, that's when I start chapter 16, which is the Day of Atonement. If you start there, you'll see what I'm talking about. So the definition of atonement means to make amends for an injury or a wrong. The purpose of chapter 16 was to demonstrate the removal and forgiveness of sins. And basically this is how Jesus comes into the picture. In the Gospel of John, chapter 1 verse 29, Jesus is about to get baptized by John the Baptist. And John the Baptist makes a comparison of Jesus with an animal. So let's read it. It says, the next day, John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. So basically he's comparing Jesus to a lamb. Now, when you go through the Old Testament, you'll notice that a few animals are being sacrificed, right? But a lamb was one of them. So basically what I'm trying to get at is Jesus' crucifixion and death redeems all people. I want to dive into the word into Galatians chapter 3 verse 13 and it says, but Christ has rescued us from the curse pronounced by the law. When he was hung on the cross, he took upon himself the curse for our wrongdoing. For it is written in the scriptures, Curse is everyone who is hung on a tree. I also wanted to read to you 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 6, and it says, He gave his life to purchase freedom for everyone. So with this in mind, the significance of Jesus Christ's crucifixion is that it was one moment where God took the entire amount of sins and the entire history of humanity in the Old Testament and in the New Testament, right, in one moment, absorbed it into himself and died. So that way, people have an opportunity to get to know Jesus and reconcile their broken relationship with God. So that was the purpose of the crucifixion. So remember how I said earlier in the video that if there's no shedding of blood, there's no forgiveness? I wanted to read Ephesians chapter 1 verse 7 to prove a point. It says, He is so rich with kindness and grace that he purchased our freedom with the blood of his son and forgave our sins. I also wanted to read Psalms 103 verse 2 which says, He forgives all my sins and heals all my diseases. So with Jesus' crucifixion, he is the only one who can redeem us and he could forgive our sins and get rid of our sins now in the old testament you realize that the animals being sacrificed to god have to be spotless this is implying that the person who can redeem us has to be sinless so when we read um let's see uh 2 corinthians chapter 5 verse 21 it says for God made Christ, who never sinned, to be the offering for our sin, so that we could be made right with God through Christ. So basically, I believe there are two verses in the entire Bible that claims Jesus never sinned. This happens to be one of them. So Jesus, you. So if we compare Jesus to the metaphor or the or the uh, animal that John the Baptist was comparing, the lamb, Jesus, was spotless, ergo sinless. And that is why his sacrifice was the only way that all people can be redeemed and forgiven. It was the only, it was the only moment he was the only one who can do it. As of, as of today, no one does sacrifices anymore or kills animals anymore to compensate for their sins because Jesus' sacrifice was the ultimate substitute. So I wanted to read one last chapter and verse. It's uh, 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 5 through 6. It says, there is, For there is one God and one mediator who can reconcile God and humanity, the man Christ Jesus. He gave his life to purchase freedom for everyone. Wow. So I really hope that this uh, clarifies why there was animal sacrifices in the past. Basically, the Old Testament is always pointing to Jesus and it gives you descriptions and things like that as to his second coming. And between the Old Testament and the New Testament, there was a 400 year gap of nothing. So the Old Testament ends with the proclamation of a Messiah and the Messiah never comes and then the New Testament starts and then there's Jesus. So one of the things I wanted to say is that for everyone who doesn't believe or for all the people who you feel need Jesus in your life, you know, I, I just think it's, I, I'm just so grateful that Jesus 
died on the cross for me and for you personally because you know i personally love animals and i wouldn't want to kill one just because i'm committing a sin and i'm glad that jesus took that away and i'm also glad he died for me because at least it gives me a chance to fix my relationship with him and personally i was always the kind of person who didn't want to talk about god face to face and here i am on youtube trying to broadcast jesus throughout the to the entire world or all the people who genuinely love and want to accept god in their hearts and if you don't know jesus i just wanted to ask you would you be willing and open to accepting him he's knocking on the door of your heart and he wants to know if you will let him in i pray and ask that you can get to know Jesus as I have and all the people who are watching. And I pray and ask that God can come into your heart and change your life. May the Lord Jesus Christ bless you all and God bless. By the way, if, I f if you felt that I've said something wrong and would like to include it, please put it in the description below so that way anyone who watches the uh, channel can read your comments and then that way they could have a better understanding.